Now, the rest of the story. Welcome back to the rest of the story. This video might be kind of wonky because I brought my camera case, but I didn't bring my actual camera holder, the accessory for it. So hopefully you can hear me. If not, this will probably be a uh, voiceover. Use the footage some way, right? So Ryan and I are here working on the last of it. That's it done. I actually started this video sooner than I was planning on because Ryan's a lot farther than I thought he was. And, uh, we're in a 23 acre field out of his place and running a total of 24 feet all together running over six miles an hour and you do chew up the acres rather quickly and that's yeah uh, for how fast things are getting done in the last few days I'd say like thunder we be rolling uh, we started tillage this fall with a vengeance but largely because I think we other than having to, we don't absolutely have to have it done before they did the anhydrous, um, but it just means we wouldn't be able to really do the deep tillage because after they put the anhydrous on, we can't go through and chisel it um, unless we're going to keep the chisel plow above where we or they um, apply the anhydrous. Otherwise, you run the risk of pulling that that nitrogen right back up and putting it on top of the soil and then you lose it. So here we are. And like starting in with tillage this fall of the vengeance, uh, we did. Uh, very, very much so. Outside of the 70 acres my dad did in season harvest wise, uh, no other chisel plowing has been done until Today. Today's Monday. Uh, we started in. Well, Dad started. Gosh, what was it? Technically, we started chiseling on last Thursday. Um, my first video that I posted here, should have posted, was with uh, the 46, uh, the BT, the Earthmaster. I started in working the stocks down. Then I went from disking stocks to chisel plowing. Uh, I turned into that, was that a, a land saver that Coon sent down? Um, I ran that. It was, uh, that was a, a 40 hour work day. Um, I, I ran all together over 36 hours of actual running. And I was actually up and active on the farm for a little over 40 hours. So that was, well, I just got home last night from doing that uh, in relation to where my videos are. <coughs> so I'm a little groggy from that. And as you can tell, I'm in the 4640 just chewing up acres. Um, Dad ran Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I ran all together Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I um, uh, got done with the 82 last night itself, and then Ryan ran it today on his ground, and then obviously back here on our stuff, my parents' stuff. Um, just uh. Just to finish up, um, this really went in the argument on me, or winning me back over to the argument of, do you just run one bigger piece of equipment, or do you run two? Either two smaller pieces of equipment, or two, you know, 
little bigger pieces of equipment that you can run. Uh, this has definitely been a year of twos. Uh, disc binds, uh, balers, chisel plows. Uh, it's, it's winning me over in a very big way. Uh, yeah, my argument against doing that is as opposed to getting two machines that you have to maintain and have around and yada yada yada, uh, we are proving uh, that we are an operation that if need be, you will find somebody to stick into that other machine and get it moving. Largely, that is between the three of us men, Ryan, my, my dad, and myself. Um, but do not think for a minute that if it came down to it, that my mother, my wife, depends on how long Hannah really wants to stick around, even Hannah, um, can be running this equipment. Very much so. And I'm getting to the point where it's, it's really showing that if we didn't have the second baler, the second disc, the second disc bind is a wash. I mean, I probably would have just ran stupid long hours to get it cut. Even though when you're <coughs> cutting hay, um, if you talk to certain people, um, you're a darn fool for cutting hay after dark. Because when you cut hay after dark, all of the nutrients in the plant go back down to the roots, then you're losing nutritional value in your feed. Well, guess what? I'm not raising or caring for dairy cattle anymore. Um, I'm looking for feed. I'm looking for something that will keep my, my beef cows alive. And you know what? Even as far as the hay that I'm selling, I'm not getting complaints. I'm not trying to raise high quality feed. If I do, great. But it makes my life a little bit easier. Yeah. I can at least get it made. Uh, quantity over quality for this guy. Um, the quantity grew, like, blew up in my face. Um, I'm 479 bales of hay is what I'll have this year what I had this year. Um, I said six to 700 was initial um, estimate. Somebody said I was an idiot, that there was no way I was gonna get six to 700 bales. Um, I have, without a doubt, if I could have harvested and ran like I wanted to, um, didn't get rained out like I did, didn't have the the yield loss, the tonnage loss from the hay rotting in the field, I mean, that's it's what it is. It, it laid for over a week. Uh, that happened to March. that happened to three of my cuttings, not three of the the same field, but three different fields that have gotten. I got rained out on. Deal with it, live with it. There isn't a dang thing I can do about it at this point, so I'm gonna keep on living my life. Um, I didn't do any fodder, any corn fodder, any bean fodder. I mentioned that in the video that I was thinking about doing soybean stubble. Uh, the problem I've come to the conclusion with making bedding bales and trying to sell them is that um, that's a losing fight. Largely because you're always trying to hit the market. Um, the thing is with corn fodder and bean fodder, bean stubble, everybody has it. Um, it's in, oh, in large quantities. It's not. It's not hard to find. Oh, excuse me. Now, making hay. That's something that is definitely hard to find. 
especially finding people that are willing to beat their heads against the wall or against the ground to make it. And you know what? You're talking to a, to a guy that... I have no desire to run 3,000 acres of hay ground like a certain OLF. Not calling him out by any means either. I respect what the guy does. Uh, but he also is making mulch hay, which I myself am not trying to uh, make my hay in a manner that it would all be mulch hay. I am actually aiming for good quality hay. I'm um, just not premium quality hay. I don't want the rotten stuff. The stuff rotting in the bale does me very little. So that's where I am there. Um, as far as the corn and soybean stubble, when everybody else can easily produce it, that's what we saw last year. Uh, nobody could get their fodder made, and corn fodder prices up the sale barn, the auction, wherever, were going stupid because it was mid-December and nobody had made any bedding. Well, guess what? We had two or three days of nice, easy, drying weather, and everybody, absolutely everybody, was making fodder. And guess what? That following week, bedding wasn't worth anything. And that's exactly why Travis has no desire to try to fight making soybean stubble or whatever else, because it's not going to yield that much ton to the acre. I'm, I'm not I'm not willing to do that. I thought about it. If I could make money doing it, I'd consider doing it. And I just don't think the dollars are there to justify it. The hay, on the other hand, I have 130 acres of hay. I'm content with that. The cows seem to be content with that. So I'm not going to run myself into the ground chasing hay acres to be making hay all summer. I don't want to spend my whole summer trying to make hay. Now for those of you that have noticed, uh, the chisel plow doesn't exactly look right. Um, I'm not going to start harping on this machine or this implement because I've made it very clear what I think of it. But that side of the machine has been rebuilt. New bearings, new brackets, the carriers. Well, guess what happened to this side? I haven't been running it. This is the first day I've actually ran this machine this year. Um, I guess it was going bad and none of us caught it. And I heard a pop and a bang and a thud. And I was dragging it. So I rolled it off to the side of the field and kept on going with my day. Because I'm not about to let that slow me down. We're going to be 100% done with tillage, primary tillage, this year. I mean, you're looking at it. This is it. And I'm okay with that. We have manure to haul. That's fine. I have places to go with it. Um, we ran some stupid long hours to get this tillage done. That does by no means mean that we aren't running a fair amount of acres. Uh, largely because we're not chiseling all of our row crop ground. Um, there's actually quite a bit that didn't get touched with the chisel plow at all. And that's okay because that's part of the, the management process of it. Um, especially the stuff that's just going into soybeans. Um, hitting it with the disc in the fall, knocking the oops, knocking the stalks down, getting some dirt on the residue, and letting that do its job over the winter actually seems to be more beneficial than trying to do a bunch of this deep tillage um, ahead of, of soybeans. It's just not worth it. Um, one of the 
the plans for the rest of the year. A lot of a little bit of everything. I have hay to move. Like, I should have been all in hay today because they're wondering where it's at. Um, I got a list of things I'd like to get done around the farms as long as my forearm. So, the goal is to probably work on some fences, work on some machinery, obviously. Um, honestly, I'd like to see a for sale sign on this machine next summer. It just isn't built heavy enough for what we for what we're doing with it. I mean, the amount of abuse that I want to administer to this machine, it just can't handle it. And I say abuse like it's, you know, it sounds like it's a bad thing, but when you're using a piece of equipment that its purpose in life is literally to be drugged through the ground several inches per miles and miles and miles. I think that qualifies as abuse. And it's just built too light for what we're what we're doing with it. Uh, the 46 doesn't give. The 82 sure doesn't give. The weight's there. It's got considerably more weight there to uh, to pull it. But oops. As far as um, what we're going to do with it, um, I'm looking to go back to a stretch frame chisel plow. Uh, something that's going to let the residue flow through a little bit easier. On a side note, um, if anybody's interested in that Polaris four-wheeler I have, I'm not 100% certain what I want to do. I'm just curious if there's some feelers out there, anybody that might be interested in buying it. I'm thinking about spinning around and buying a Honda Rincon, the big form, the big Honda. Um, I need a four-wheeler on each farm and the Polaris does just fine. I don't have to get rid of it. It's not even 100% mine, it's, it's Brittany's, but said it was okay to do something with it it's just I don't like it because it seems like how you sit on it um, seems like you're sitting on top of the world as opposed to the Hondas where you're sitting down in the machine you're tighter against it I'm not worried about being thrown off of it so easily we rolled that Polaris I mean not terribly but we did we rolled that the first week we had it and we weren't even doing anything stupid other than chasing a cow, trying to get a cow back, uh, back in. So, you guys, I can't hardly talk. My voice is closing down on me again. So, you guys are watching the last of 2020 tillage. I got to do a, just a little bit of tillage. chiseling next year, but not actually chisel chiseling. Um, just some waterways I want to put in. And this does a nice job of moving the dirt side to side, which is what I want. Uh, there's that whole vertical tillage argument that is lost on me. I actually want to be able to throw the dirt a little bit more, rather. It's residue management when I'm pulling a chisel plow across the field. Um, it's not necessarily trying to reduce or get rid of compaction, because uh, somebody will pipe in and say that uh, chisel plowing those don't do anything for compaction, you idiot. Well, if you're running them deep enough, yeah, probably. To a certain degree, they gotta help. I know it helps. Um, it gets air into the ground. This is my opinion on it. It helps manage the residue, buries it better than... Um, not to pick on that coon machine. It's just that this varies more of the residue um, than that than that coon machine. Now, the coon machine absolutely does more for compaction than a chisel plow will ever hope to. 
So it's trying to find a happy medium. If I was looking to go out and deal with compaction, that coon machine is exactly what I'd be hooking up to. Uh, when I'm looking to manage residue, um, maybe not completely bury it like a old fashioned plow would, um, to manage residue, um, expose some dirt so that ground will help will warm up quicker in the spring, which is drying out and warming up earlier is important to me, as opposed to leaving a lot of residue on top of the soil and keeping the ground colder and wetter later into the spring. I want to be planting the last week of April, ideally. Um, we started planting beans first before corn. That has, that has won me over. Um, we'll be, uh, beans will take the abuse. They seem to like it. They seem to enjoy it. Um, beans, they will take cooler, maybe not ideal planting conditions better than corn will. I mean, two years ago I planted beans first because it was what, the second, going on the second week of May and we hadn't planted anything and it was wet, it was muddy, it was crappy, it was terrible, I hated myself. Every absolute minute that I was in the planter that year, I uh, planted beans into unfavorable conditions and you know what, they yielded really well. Um, 60 plus, I'll live with that. I can live with 60 plus bushel beans all day long. Corn, planting those conditions, corn won't take it. It will take it, but you're going to be losing yield right off, right off the top. Um, the second that seed is hitting cold, wet soil, you're losing bushels. You're losing bushels the second that seed is hitting the soil. And even on a regular year, I mean, this year I did, I, I, I had beans first. Um, even on a regular year where it's giving you the opportunity to do it, and if I can go out a few days earlier or a couple days earlier and plant beans, get those in, get those growing, get them out of the ground so they can start utilizing all the sunlight they can, I'm all for it. Corn will, even longer day corn will wait in the bag a few days. And that's it. I can't feel my, or I can feel my throat, it's not feeling good. Once again, you're watching the rest of the story. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Until next time, take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. I'll talk to you then.